Welcome to our Emmys documentary panel. Joining us today is Ryan White from Visible Out on Television, Nanette Burstein from Hillary, James Hernandez from McMillions, and Reginald Hutlin from The Black Godfather. Thank you all for being here. Um, I think documentary, especially uh, on TV, has evolved a lot over the years. So uh, what, from your perspective, how have you seen a change um, in, in, you know, from your end, like working and for years, sometimes on one project? Um, Nanette, let's start with you. Uh, well, I've seen a huge change. I mean, I've make, been making documentaries for 25 years. Um, don't mean to date myself, but I have. And, you know, it was a, it was a struggle beforehand. There are very few uh, outlets. And, and mainly that it wasn't because there wasn't an audience. It was just a question of how to reach that audience. And, you know, art house theaters made it complicated. It made it complicated only airing it one or two times on television. And how do you promote for that? So streaming was the answer. And it was the unexpected answer. And it really changed uh, the marketplace. And I think there is, as we've seen, a, a hunger from audiences to see real stories. There's amazing stories, amazing filmmakers out there that can bring it to them. And uh, it's just, it's, it's changed the game. People see it now as a, a real uh, way to it's it's a it's real commerce and it, and you and you can have an idea and and not think oh my god how do I actually get this made or finance or sold and seen and uh, that's I didn't actually expect that to happen in my lifetime but it has so that's wonderful um, so yeah it's been a huge change I've seen no I agree I think streaming has revolutionized the relationship of documentaries with the audience. I mean, my kids don't put documentaries in that, um, you know, medicine box. <laughs> you know, we are seen as now legitimate part of entertainment. Like, what do you want to watch? I heard about this good documentary. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, <laughs> that is a, <laughs> it's great. That definitely allows for uh, just a, a greater amount of breadth to be able to cover within a, a specific topic. Like I know for myself with McMillions, in the past that would have been a 90 minute uh, film and it would have been great, but the, to be able to dive into the motivations behind why people do things, it just would not have been able to be shown on a broader scale. It would have been far more, I don't know, almost sensationalized where with this, you start to look at, or with any of our projects, you can start to look at the the depth of why people are doing the things they do, which inherently are, are some of the reasons why TV shows have been uh, popular in the first place. You're continuing to dive uh, into someone's psyche and understand why they make the decisions they make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to be able to do that, I mean, we're all here because we made a series um, and that really wasn't that big of a format, even, you know, six or seven years ago. Um, and so to be able to do that and audiences are proving um, that the numbers are there. And, and by the way, our budgets, I'm sure, are much smaller than any scripted series, you know, on Netflix or Apple or Hulu. Um, but it's proving time and time, you know, I, I made... Uh, a show called The Keepers for Netflix in 2017. And I think it was my fifth or sixth documentary that I had made, but it was my first series. And the popularity of that show compared to the, some of the films that I had made before, which were for great distributors and by documentary standards had quite done well, um, blew it out of the water. And I think we're seeing that every year, you know, like there's a, there's a handful of series that, that take the country by storm and it's proving that audiences are willing to sit down for five, six, seven hours of documentary content. Hmm. Well, uh, uh, all of your projects uh, in particular, um, they're about, you know, an event or a person or a story in the past versus um, like a, a live candid documentary where you're following a subject for a specific period of time. Um, Ryan, I'm, I'm a huge tennis fan, so I loved Serena and you chronicled her 2015 season in that. So do you guys have a preference for either type of documentary? Uh, Ryan, since I already singled you out, I'll start with you. 
Yeah, I, I far prefer a, ver a verite documentary to a retrospective. And I actually said no to Apple at the beginning about making visible because of that. But it wasn't until I like dived into the research. And I think when you do this in any historical or ar archival film, you can discover this if there's enough there that you really can take your audience back to being in those moments that it doesn't have to be, you know, like the traditional retrospective style of documentary. And I think like all my colleagues here have done that brilliantly with their series this year. So I think um, for me, that was definitely outside of my comfort zone um, doing an archival film. Like I like to be holding my camera, documenting something as it's unfolding, never knowing when it's gonna end, you know, working on things for three or four or five years, not knowing when the ending's gonna drop, but it, it is nice to be able to schedule in advance. Like when you know what has already unfolded, it's a whole different way of documentary filmmaking. So that part was refreshing. Yeah, and with, uh, with being able to do that, there, there really is that ability to map things out in a, a really interesting way, but there is also that struggle of locking down archival and, and dealing with different networks. So there, it's, it's interesting because you have the storytelling aspect of doing a, a purely or mostly archival a story from the past, but when you're working with something that's mostly verite, it's just, it has that raw feel. It's almost the difference between like listening to your favorite album by your favorite band, but going to see them live is like, just such a visceral, visceral experience of being there in the moment, experiencing it. It's just, it, it, they're, they're both great. They just have their different positives about them. I mean, I, I've done both. I, I actually am the opposite. I, I have done both. I have uh, done two films that were all, you know, cinema verite and a few projects that have been, you know, mainly uh, stories that have already happened, but, still uncovering so much for me um and i prefer uh and, and you know doing stories of, about people I, but i also just prefer doing you know biographies and and looking at people and their the lie the scope of their lives have already happened and and yet you can learn so much and unpack it and frame it in a certain way so i think you know it's really up to the filmmaker of what they group to the most you know i totally understand why people love the excitement of verite and and it's really just you know the the sort of interest level of what most fascinates you as a filmmaker for me you know it's it's the biographies and polarizing figures and i've done both and i've kind of realized you know i've done the biography i've done the cinema verite and i realized like what i love but i totally understand why a filmmaker would love a different process and so it's just whatever Floats your boat. <laughs> Whatever keeps you 24 hours obsessed that you're willing to have this kind of lifestyle. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up watching my older brother make cinema verite documentaries. So that was kind of always my ethos, even from childhood. Um, uh, but when I, you know, Clarence um, was a look back at a man's life and I'm developing all these pro different documentary projects now, um, many of which are historical, uh, have a historical bit to them. And for me, when I look at a story, I go, well, should it be a scripted movie? Should it be a television series? Should it be a documentary? What style of documentary? So I, I look at all formats. And, and by the way, and you know, even within those format categories, you can mash them up in interesting ways, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm, you know, the older I get, the more, uh, the, the less I care about rules, and the more I'm like, well, what's the most effective way of getting the idea across, because that's, I'm doing this because I want to say something, and I'll use any tool in the toolbox to get that done. Mm -hmm. Um, is there a subject that you would love to see a documentary on, whether or not you make it? Uh, James, let's start with you. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. First, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot. I'm, uh, the, how, how do I narrow that down to just one thing? I mean, honestly, the thing that, if there was anything I could have done that uh, that I wish I could have done, would I, I know I probably shouldn't say this, but the last dance, just growing up, like spe like 
half of my life in Chicago and having season tickets to Bulls games and like getting to grow up in that era was just phenomenal to me. Uh, there's like so much of my history that's wrapped up in the Bulls and Michael Jordan and, and like within my family, like the entire, every single episode, I have family members calling me, like we're just calling back. <laughs> um, and then the, uh, but of something that's never been done before, uh, I, I don't know, probably, I don't know. I, I'm gonna, I'll we'll think. come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I picked on you first. <laughs> no, it's all good. Has anyone thought of anything yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know there is a large scale Prince documentary in the works. Yeah. And I'm just like, Better be good <laughs> because Dude, I feel the same way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am with you on that one. <laughs> it's like I love that man. I love Thank his you. art. I love everything about him. So it's like if I'm not making it, that's fine. But boy, I mean, he, he yeah. just means so much to me uh, as an artist, as a social phenomenon. So yeah. I second that. I second that one. Uh, yeah. I I wish I could have done it, but if I can't, I hope they do it well, because God knows that story needs to be told well. Yep. Um, and I'll just add, I mean, obviously we're living through multiple historical moments this year, and I know many of our colleagues are out there documenting all of these critical junctures, so um, I feel like we're at a real, you know, like visible is about representation and there's a real conversation happening right now in the documentary community, which I think is so healthy about uh, people telling their own stories and how do you enable those people. And so, you know, I've started to hear of, of certain directors or, or people that weren't even directors before, but are, but are on the ground shooting moments that are happening right now. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what unfolds over the next few years because it's been such a weird year for us you know like you can tell we're all in our homes right now um to, so to see whatever whatever comes out of what our colleagues are doing comes out of the stuff that they've been shooting this year i'm i'm very excited to see over the coming years yeah i mean one thing i want to add is I, I feel like the the way that the news captures current events is is it's become this business that's, that, that doesn't have, unfortunately, the funding. Like, they don't have bureaus across the country. You know, it's Trump news, or it's, it's all about whatever immediate crisis they can deal with 24-7. So I think, you know, obviously, we've, we've come to understand that there's a place for documentaries. There's a hunger for them. And part of it is they didn't have access to them, and now people do, and they know how to find it, and they always like them. But a lot of it is also people... Um, are hungry for these stories that documentarians can tell in a different way that the news is not covering. They're just not. They don't have the budgets. They don't have the interest. They don't have the ad base to do it. And so to spend a lot of time doing investigative, like on the ground, you can have a 20-year-old who's like filming an incredible story that none of us know about or have access to and can capture it and do the work and get it out there. Um, and, and get it seen. And, you know, I, I think it's replacing what we're missing in our, our news media. And, and that's why they're more welcome than ever. So I think there's a million stories we can't even predict that documentaries have and, and will take the place of. Um, and especially with the way that technology is and how user friendly it is, you know, much more than when I was coming up, you know, um, I just think there's such an opportunity and a void to fill. Um, there will be many people telling many stories that we all want to see, and that's really exciting. Yeah, uh, to to piggyback on that, I mean, ultimately, a story that's been very fascinating to me is just the extreme sides of media. Like you're talking about, like media now is entertainment, basically, and you can find your version of the truth anywhere. It doesn't matter what side you're on. And the hardest thing to find nowadays, and I found myself in, in these times trying to search for it more than ever, is the middle. Like there's, there really is, uh, 
that the bias of a human being to find your truth. It's like anybody who's been through a breakup and you're just talking to every single friend, trying to hear the thing that you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I would like to look at the, the changes in media, which really started, what was it in the, it was during the Nixon administration, they, they changed the law where the news had to show both sides of a story and you can now be allowed to have a bias in a specific direction and see how that actually formulates all the decisions we make. I mean, a lot of people just get their information from Facebook and that is the most biased because you have algorithms giving you exactly what you want, that what they know that you want so you continue to come back. So yeah. that, uh, that would be a very large complex uh, thing to tackle, but that would be an interesting thing to see. Yeah, yeah but it's a two part one because it's, it's the death of the uh, equal time uh, rule and also uh, the rise of digital media, mm -hmm. which as you said, says, oh, is this what you like? Then I'll give you what you like, which is very different from what you need, right? So the, you know, oh, so yeah, it's the, it's the ongoing tragedy of our age. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, the illusion of information. Yeah. yeah. There's right, the guys. time, we did it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> well, guys, it was great speaking with all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, stay safe, uh, wear a mask, and hopefully we can meet in person one day. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.